There is an expression that I love. I don't know where it comes from. It comes from a place where there's cattle, I think. Um, but perhaps you've heard it, that somebody might be uh, said to be all hat and no cattle, right? We know that expression. And it's this sense that somebody is all talk, right? But not, not so much in the doing. And for somebody who has a difficult time sitting still for extended periods of time, I really resonate with this idea of, of doing. There is the doing of God's word. And we hear this from various parts of the Christian tradition, but it's interesting to me always when we get a reading from James in the lectionary, because what was the one book in the Bible that Luther wanted to chuck? <laughs> James. <laughs> James is all about works, and even if you know just only a little bit about Martin Luther, who is all about grace, he said it is an epistle of straw, meaning it has no substance. Now, Luther had enough respect for the traditions of the church that he didn't feel on his own hook he could just chuck this book out of the New Testament. And I think for Lutherans, it's good for us to be challenged by readings that encourage us to be doers not simply thinkers or speakers, but the idea that we are doers of the gospel. Again, language that we hear from other parts of the Christian tradition, we think back a number of years ago, not too long ago, there was a, a, a whole rage of, of bracelets and other things that said WWJD, right? What would Jesus do? You know, it doesn't say WWJS, it didn't say what would Jesus say? It says, what would Jesus do? But I think Lutherans bring an important component to this conversation because in the United States, largely, I would argue, American Christianity tends to come from the Calvin side of the theological tradition and does not come from the Lutheran tradition. But since most Lutherans in the United States live in, you know, the, the United States, we get a heavy dose of this Calvinism. And as Lutherans, it's important to us to remember that we enter into this world and mo move through this world as broken parts of God's creation. Now, we might get caught up in modern language and talk about sin and evil, and suddenly that feels really out of date and something that really involves our neighbor that we don't like and not so much us. But this idea of human brokenness as a universal condition is an important understanding. If for no other reason, because it allows us to understand that our neighbor is in the same boat with us, as opposed to starting in a position that states that we are above the neighbor who is bugging us, right? That we are all starting this position and being broken. Now we gather together. The purpose of gathering together is to understand that in our brokenness, or as Luther might have referred to the church as a bit of a hospital for those who are sick, that we as human beings gather in this space recognizing that in our brokenness, we seek to make choices in this world that draw us closer to Christ's action in this world. Not all the way over. We know we can't aspire to that, but the idea is that we make small nudges, small movements that over time and in community draw us closer to Christ in this world. When I was in seminary, we were talking about all of this business of justification and how it causes us to live differently. And I remember a professor discussing this issue in regards to human behavior. Now, as human beings, do we read an article or a book and get a new idea, and suddenly we act differently for the rest of our lives? Sometimes that might happen. Or, in my experience, the things that stick the most are when we change our behavior 
and over time, our mind will follow. That is the sense of the gospel text that we have for today. That when we begin to align our actions more with Christ, that our heart and our mind draw closer. It may be in our, our COVID speak, perhaps a lagging indicator, the sense that our mind and our heart would draw closer to Christ. But when we think about it, this idea of drawing closer to Christ, you'll notice it is not this image of punishing others. I just finished a book called Crusaders. There is definitely a thread in the Christian tradition, even represented in modern America, that has a great fondness for the punishment of others. That was not what Christ was about. We hear language about being meek, about listening. We hear language about being clean, about drawing closer to God. Profoundly, I think, this image is one of love. Love is something that Christ embodied. Love is something that Christ shared, and curiously, shared often with those that the religious leaders thought were beyond the pale. You'll notice that in the Gospels, when Jesus has conflict, it's not with the prostitutes, it's not with the homeless, it's not with women, it is almost universally with the religious leadership. And you'll note today, we still have religious leadership. <laughs> I think as Christians, we like to say, well, Jesus got rid of all of them, right? <laughs> no, no. We all struggle. And in our brokenness, we try to explain why we are worthy of Christ's love, but others are not. That is not the message of Christ. And I think one of the challenges, if we talk about this business of acting closer to Christ's heart with the idea that our heart and mind will follow, has to do with loving and reaching out to support those we find difficult to love and to support. And when we do that, our hearts draw closer to Christ. So as you move through this week, I would encourage you to remember two things from this text. We all are broken. And we approach our lives understanding that we are broken as our neighbor is broken, as our politicians are broken, as we all as human beings are broken. But that in coming together and supporting one another, we might act in ways of love towards those that may have been hard for us to love. And in walking that path and doing those things that Jesus would do, our hearts and our lives are brought closer to Christ. Amen.